So neurobiology of suicide. This is going to be just a quick and dirty one slide introduction to neurobiology of suicide because we actually don't have that much to really answer here. This is all still areas of active research and ongoing research. The first thing to note is twin and genetic studies indicate that there's up to a 50% of suicide risk is genetically mediated. So again, going back to the last video where I said it's really important that you screen people for any kind of family history of suicide. You just simply ask them, has anyone in the family ever completed or attempted suicide? What you're really looking for there is the genetic component, right? You're trying to figure out, you know, first of all, has anyone attempted or completed suicide in the family? And then how close in relation to the person that's currently being evaluated is that person? So is it your mother? Is it your father? Is it your brother or sister? Or is it, you know, your, your aunt or, you know, your uncle or somebody or cousin, somebody more distant? So obviously the closer the person is in relation, the more immediate the family, the more likely the genetic role will be, um, will be more prominent. So again, genetics, family history, important. Some of the early studies found that patients who completed suicide and particularly those using violent means had lower levels of serotonin metabolites 5-HIAA in the CSF than did control patients. Now this is a question that comes up all the time on PRITE, this comes up all the time on board exams, so definitely be aware that people who completed suicide, particularly again using very violent means, they have lower levels of serotonin metabolites in their CSF. In subsequent studies these findings <clears throat> can uh, continue to be demonstrated and low levels of 5-HIA correlate with higher lethality of attempts and predict future suicides. Now that doesn't mean we're going to go around doing a spinal tap on every single person or doing a lumbar puncture on every single person that, you know, is depressed or who has ever voiced suicidal ideation. It's more, this is more of an academic point and again it's a testable point and one that they like to ask on standardized exams. But clinically speaking, it, it does, it's not very practical, it's invasive, and whenever you do a, a procedure, say a, spinal, say a spinal tap, you run the risk of infection, damage to surrounding structures, and bleeding. So obviously you're not going to go out and, and do this on every one of your patients. They also started to look into some abnormalities in the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, which has also been described, although there's much fewer studies, and the, few, and the studies that are looking at this hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis as a possible um, neurobiological reason for suicide, they have not really found a lot of good data to substantiate it at this point, but it's something to keep on the radar and to be aware of. And that covers pretty much the neurobiology of suicide. Again, them ser low serotonin metabolites in the CSF, extremely important question, guaranteed to get you a few points.